morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now today we've got not ten, not five, but these four evening skies and sunsets. And if you stick around to the end, we've even got the northern lights. So come and join me and we'll paint these step by step together. Just before we start, I'd just very quickly like to say a big thank you to everyone who's been leaving comments and asking questions. Now I do read every single one and I try to get back to everyone, but being Mr. Slow Two Finger Typist, it takes me a bit of time. So enough of that, let's get going, shall we? Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is some Saunders Waterford Rough, 300 pound, any decent watercolour paper will do. My paints today, I'll let you know what they are as we go through the exercises. Just three brushes, a mop, three quarter inch flat, and a number 12 round. Okay, to start with, I've had many comments about problems with getting your water to paint ratios right. And as we're going to be using lots of bright, heavy pigmented washes today, I'll just quickly run through it. So if you start with lots of water and add in just a small amount of paint, it's clear that your wash is going to look weak and pale. And sometimes that's exactly what we want. Now if you add very little water, then you'll get this very dry, flat, non-transparent wash, which is not what we want. But there's no reason why you can't get both. Lots of water and lots of pigment. And as a general rule, I like to have slightly more water than paint, and it's about a 60-40% ratio. So off we go. This first colour is roughly a 50-50 mix of cobalt blue and cerulean blue. And with my mop, I'm totally wetting the paper. And then in with a simple graduated wash. And now I'm using a 50-50 mix of cadmium yellow and cadmium orange and painting in from the bottom wet in wet these bands of colour. Now don't work the brush too much as you could be in danger of it turning into a greenish colour. While this is still wet I'm lifting out with some tissue a few subtle wispy clouds. Now these I think are your serious clouds. Now I'm mixing a nice dark by adding in some Payne's Grey and a touch of burnt umber into my blue. Now make sure this is totally dry and with a very light touch, as you don't want to pull up any of the paint, re-wet the whole sky area. And now with my flat brush, painting these long thin dark clouds. Nimbostratus. <laughs> what would we do without Google? And now I'm lifting my board from the side and letting the paint move slowly across. Now let that dry again and with the same dark colour paint in the foreground. And softening the top edges with some clean water. And how about a little village church? And I think we're done. 
tell you what, let's put in with some orange soft pastel a lit church window. And perhaps the whole village is there for even song. Evening is drawing on. And for this next sunset, this is one of Margot's photos of our local beach at Bexhill. So start by wetting the paper just in the sky down to the horizon line. Then this is just a few bands of lemon yellow. And then quickly paint in wet in wet some pyrrole scarlet, but any warm red will do. Now with some fairly light streaks of Payne's Grey, and here just a little bit stronger. Now I'm tilting my board for a few moments just to get a little movement with the paint. And I'm using and blending the same colours in this section to suggest the reflection in the wet sand. And when this is dry, with Payne's Grey again, just putting in the foreground and still using my flat brush. And here a much lighter value for the sea. And again, dropping in some red to reflect from the sky. Now for those of you who may know the area, this is Beachy Head, looking towards Eastbourne. And here I'm just dabbing out with a tissue just to lighten it a tad. All with Payne's Grey again for these rocks and details in the sea. And I'm using my number 12 brush for all of this. Now a very strong value for the foreground and here I'm just painting in the wooden breakwaters, something you'll see all along the coast in the UK. And I think that's done. It's just a simple little exercise. In real time, it probably didn't take any more than an hour. Now we're going to get very dramatic. And this is just based on another of Margot's photos taken from the house looking towards the west. 
So very little drawing needed, but loads of bright colours. And wet the paper all over as normal. So straight in with some diagonal stripes of lemon yellow, leaving a small gap of white in the centre. Then in with some pyrrole red at the sides. Again, any warm red will do. Now this is some dioxidine purple, but you could mix this from some cobalt blue and alizarin crimson if you haven't got any. And I'm really building up the strength of the colour at the edges. And this must be done still all wet and wet. Now I'm tilting my board at about an angle of 45 degrees just to let the paint run across. So now we need to let this totally dry so it's a perfect time for a short break and what else could we have but a glass of tequila sunset. Not to be confused with a tequila sunrise which is also a drink and one of my favourite Eagles songs. And now for the foreground and this is a mix of Payne's Grey with a touch of sap green nice and strong and dark. And here, just a few wet and wet bands of Payne's Grey. Here, keeping my brush flat to the paper for this dry brush effect for these trees. Now I'm just dropping in some clean water to soften a few of the tops here of these trees. Next, lifting out with a damp brush a few highlights. And finally some dark Payne's Grey shadows coming down the slope. And that should do it. Next I've had several requests for the Northern Lights and I'm not going to give you the proper name as I don't think I can pronounce it. Aurora Borealis. Yeah that'll do. The colours I'm using for this are Payne's Grey, Phalo Blue, phalo green and a touch of permanent magenta. Now these two phalo colours are super bright and would be great to get that nice glow that we need. But you could also use some viridian green or Prussian blue if you haven't got the phalo colours. So as usual start by wetting the paper. Then with a flat brush paint in some vertical stripes of phalo green. And now with some phalo blue. A little bit of splatting. 
and dropping in some fairly solid blobs of colour. And I'm tilting the board almost to a vertical angle to get the paint to streak down. And here I'm just using my spray to keep those colours moving. Adding in some more pigment here, I just love watching it move down the paper. Next I'm really making sure this is totally dry before the next stage. Just a simple little bit of drawing here. Next I'm completely saturating the paper with the spray. Now I could re-wet with a brush as previously, but because I used a lot of paint I don't want to disturb any of it, even though it is dried. Now this is some dark Payne's Grey and I'm using my flat brush and painting in these diagonal stripes. This is all in the lap of the gods as I'm not really sure how this is going to work. But I'm just building up the colour and tilting my board to let that paint streak down. Now here I'm just adding some of the permanent magenta into the Payne's Grey to get this slight pinkish colour at the bottom. drying the brush and lifting out a few lighter tones. It's amazing, when this is dried you can see how much the colour has changed. For the foreground here I'm just using a 50-50 mix of phthalo blue and Payne's grey and giving a suggestion of some distant mountains, lightening the value towards the distance. Now for this rocky edge and some pine trees I'm using a very strong mix of Payne's grey, all done with my number 12 brush.
after painting this foreground, I feel I could do with a little balance here in the top right. So I'm darkening this corner of the sky. And then spraying in with water to let it run down again. Always tilting my board. Here a few little details. Now with some white poster paint, gouache or even some white acrylic, I'm mixing up a milky solution for some stars and it wants to be sort of emulsion paint thickness. Test the consistency first on some scrap. And off we go. I feel like breaking into starry starry night, paint your palette, but no, maybe not. Covering up some trees here also might help. And if you can splatter the Orion constellation in one go, I tell you, I'll be very impressed. And here, a few more prominent stars painted in with the brush. And there we have it, finished. The Aurora Bo Boreari, the Aurora, Aurora, the Northern Lights. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. They really are good, simple one hour exercises which will help you to get those nice wet in wet blends going. So please don't forget to do all the normals, like, subscribe, leave a comment. And as ever, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Take care now.